overview. Um, I am uh, Katrina Barlow. At, got a great introduction where I am uh, working on the business side for Chorus. I have a couple colleagues on the phone. So I have um, Pablo and uh, Justin and one of a couple of our community trainers who just turned their videos on to say hello. Um, so if you also have questions for them, we can talk a couple questions their way as well. Um, in the meantime, what I thought I would do is actually just go straight into um, demo where you can actually see the tools, um, get a sense for what Chorus is. I know that there's often a lot of mystery around what the platforms actually do, especially for a Chorus like, or especially for a platform like Chorus as opposed to a WordPress based one where it's a little bit um, more behind the scenes. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and share screen here. Okay, can everyone see what I'm working in? I'm gonna take a silence as an affirmative here. <laughs> okay, so um, as a general philosophy, um, Chorus builds tools that are powerful and simple. So you're gonna see that thematically through this entire presentation. Um, we are going to be in our Chorus white label environment, which is um, essentially a, a production environment. So it shows Chorus exactly as it works, but will be very minimally styled. Um, we'll have not the full feature set that we have enabled across the whole platform, but is a pretty good uh, replica of, of what using Chorus is today. Um, so one thing to just kind of call out quickly, so you can obviously search by keyword here, you can search by um, byline, you can search for things like uh, group searches, including um, searching only for drafts. So kind of in the spirit of keeping things simple, but really powerful, we just make it very easy for you to manage your archive of stories. Um, when you come over to Chorus, we migrate your full archive of stories. We've done so for um, millions of articles at this point in time. So really powerful tool to dig up articles that date back to 1999. Um, in the top right corner here, you'll see that there are ways to um, create new stories. So there's a couple different storytelling elements enabled for this particular test site. We're gonna go ahead and click on new story. This should look uh, relatively straightforward. So again, in the spirit of keeping tools almost painfully obvious, that is exactly what you're looking at here. Um, if I want to create a headline, I can say, let me pull over, I was gonna recreate this um, meter story for our demo here today. Pull over this headline, you can see that the permalink auto-populated. You can go in here and pull the deckhead. Um, if for some reason, you don't know what a deckhead is, we have these helpful tool tips around so you can actually always poke around and see exactly how to um, add lead image, access our help center, um, do, whatever, do whatever you need to make it easy for you to do your jobs. Um, here we have author byline, so I can add multiple users if I wanted to. So I can add my colleague Justin here. I can do, um, custom freeform byline, so I could say special to use catalyst here and go ahead and italicize that. Um, if I want to go ahead and add in some lead art, you'll see some pretty um, standard options here. So obviously you can have a video story, we can drop in a gallery, we can explore all of those options. Um, I really love showing off the search function because I think it shows how we think about handling third party integrations into the platform. So for instance here, one example is if you wanted to search for um, Getty images, I could search for like James or Melbourne or whatever I'm looking for at a particular time. You can um, access an image. So let's go ahead and click here, we can select a focal point. I can change the crop if I wanted to. So if I want a tighter crop, select subject, uh, brings over the caption information, and then I can insert image. Um, I can also upload from the, um, my desktop. So if I wanna go here actually and upload this lovely lead image, I'm gonna go ahead and say, search my device. So let's go into image one here open, select my focal point. I'm going to go in and grab, let's see, why don't I just add in, this is a caption. Say special to this catalyst. 
um, a couple options here. So you can tag your images or add notes fields that you can then search throughout you know, your lifetime on course. So it's easy to access images used prior. Um, and then if I keep scrolling down, you can actually see that there are additional headlines and images here. So, um, you know, we care a lot about uh, news publishers being able to maximize their SEO traffic, um, being able to write uh, engaging social media headlines. Uh, so often you want to keep a homepage or a section front looking fresh. So you might change the image or you might change the homepage there. So we can actually go ahead and say, maybe we want a different image here. So let's go with um, this image for our homepage. Go ahead and insert image. Um, and we'll actually see, let's see if I want to say, um, Melbourne knows how to eat, just to make sure that, you know, I'm having a keyword rich headline. We can see how this is going to actually play out later in preview. And then go ahead and collapse this down. So here is our story body now. So I can um, maximize into a distraction free mode or I can stay in my standard story editor. I just copied and pasted a bunch of text over here. Let me just grab all of this, drop it into the story. And you can see that chorus is very copy paste friendly. So it grabbed paragraphs, it grabbed bold, it grabbed um, hyperlinks that are already in the story. I can go in and uh, let me actually show you a few more things in the story body. Um, I can make things bold here. So I can unbold, bold. I can leave editor's notes. So I could say, Justin, edit the lead sentence um, with more words and you know things that are often pretty common I think to publishing you'll often want editors comments so if, in case of accidental publish or if you're working through a live story you don't want your changes being published live I can see Justin Glow editing this story um, I can also see exactly how many people are in this particular uh, story so uh, you have KB my initials as well as Justin Glow's initials um, if I want to add in an image, for instance, so we already saw this process, I can do so. I might actually want to add in um, a gallery at this point in time. So let's go ahead and search our galleries. So a couple images in here, you can search by either, um, either sort. But if I wanted to add in a bunch of images, let's go ahead and grab a bunch of images here. And drag them and upload them. The suspense. It's really, I should have picked a uh, slightly lower res images, note to self. Let me go ahead and see if I can add in one image here. Okay, I'm gonna come back here and check on my photo gallery once it's loaded. Um, but I can also add in things like pull quotes. So for instance, this story, if I wanted to say, um, why, why am I still not over Melbourne? I can go in and say, let's go ahead and insert pull quote, edit. Um, if I wanted to add in a sidebar, you can reuse a lot of these elements um, across a number of stories. So if I want to go ahead and say, you know, search sidebars. This is a Hudson Yard sidebar. I can relabel it if I want, insert sidebar. Um, if you decide that you don't want any of these elements, you can just pretty quickly pull them out. So I can remove my sidebar. Um, I can, let me actually add that back in. Insert sidebar. Um, if I want to add in a couple images here to show you some of our layout tools, I can actually now search for story images that were already associated with this particular story. I can go in here and add in this image. 
go add in one more image here. I'm gonna double up here. Gonna check on my photo gallery now. Like, let's go add our photo gallery. We have, we add in a couple more. Let's actually edit and change up the order here. So maybe we want this lead one. Maybe I wanna add in one more of the two images that I'd uploaded previously. I can pull this one up. We can delete this one. So you can see how easy it is to move around and edit photo galleries, insert gallery. Um, if I want to go ahead and add an embed, so for instance, if I have a tweet I want to embed, I'm actually going to go ahead and just drop that in, get embed, insert. Um, you might notice that everything right now has been in a single column layout. We'll actually change that up in a little bit. Um, if I want to add a YouTube video, it's exactly the same. So we support um, several different types of embeds. So um, you can often drop in different types of assets in this exact same manner. Um, and then if I wanted to show you just a couple more things that are really um, neat, so we can do action boxes. So I could say something like um, call to action, sign up for this thing here, right? And I can say um, contact us and then HTTP, let's do thechorus.com. We are always secure. Um, I can insert my action box. Um, and then I'm trying to think of a couple more things that might be fun for you to see. Um, I really like our table functions. So, um, you know, the number of options here is uh, we are generally pretty opinionated in um, making sure that the story editor is um, really easy to use. It's intuitive. So we don't allow a ton of just free form. You're worried about constantly deleting tags, but obviously sometimes you want a responsive iframe or the ability to drop in some custom components. So for instance, you have an HTML block um, accessible to you here for that. Um, let me go in and drop in a related link just so we can show a couple more attributes here. So if I wanted to um, call out one related story, I'm gonna go in here and hit insert related. Add, pulls in the headline automatically. Um, so at this point in time, we are, let's say we're pretty um, good with our story. And a bunch of content at the end. Um, at the bottom of the story, you'll see that there are some um, fields here that are often related to taxonomy or related to how to aggregate uh, content into related chronological streams or to add related links so you can follow all uh, stories that are targeted to that exact same uh, topic. So maybe it's, for in this particular case, it's eating around the world. Um, you could make sure that all of your related links and your um, uh, related traffic links are dynamically populated. Um, we also have uh, that ability to connect Twitter accounts. So based on your permissions, this might just be a reporter account. You might have access to the brand account if you are a social media manager or an editor. Um, so you can edit this right here. Um, one last thing to just call out is we keep track of version histories. So you can see that I just opened up um, previous versions. I can actually see exactly what someone has changed in the meantime. Right? And you can compare back to previous versions that you can then revert to. So I could revert to this older version of a story if I so chose. Um, we also have version history in addition to being the full story. We have it um, at the object level so we can actually write multiple headlines and revert back. So if I wanted to say um, Melbourne her year in about a minute once we've registered this as a changed uh, uh, changed object in our version history, I'd actually be able to call back and switch between headlines. So we'll do that in a second. Um, a couple other things to just show you. So um, we 
showed how documentation is folded in, but you can always access it. We have access to release notes. You can contact our lovely community team. Um, so we really care about the platform being a place that users actually like to create uh, content. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, if I am ready to go ahead and hit preview, this is where we can start seeing what the article will look like. I've obviously peppered it with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so it might be a little bit of spaghetti thrown at the wall, but we'll see. Um, so you can see that there is an image there. We're looking at the AMP format with a pull quote. I can switch over to the mobile view. Um, tablet, let me actually leap over here to the share button. So we had changed a couple images here. So I changed the homepage headline. We had changed the search headline um, away from a city to a more keyword rich headline. So that is showing exactly how this would render in a Google search carousel. And then in desktop, this is where we might actually want to break out of the single column layout that we've been in thus far because we have the most space to play with. So you can see that um, we have this right rail. I might change our layout here. So at this point in time, I can toggle between templates. So I can say, you know, maybe we actually want a full bleed image at the top. This is a very magazine-y story. Um, maybe we want a drop cap. And maybe the first paragraph should be large. Um, I'm going to go and say maybe our pull quote uh, should be a left aligned. I'm not loving that. Quote over here again. Um, we have our sidebar. Again, you can modify each of these. Um, this image is so lovely. Maybe we want to stretch it out. Or actually, you know, we can, for instance, group images and say uh, we want them side by side. Um, if I decide to change my mind about a template, I can actually just go ahead and switch and all of my other changes will remain intact. So here you can see that we still have this large text in the paragraph. Um, this is our photo gallery element. So we can see the different photos that we've added. Um, each of these you can move again um, to different areas of the story if you wanted to. Our call to action box, related links. So these are these should all now look like familiar um, items that we previously added. Um, maybe at the end of the story, we want to add an end mark to indicate we're at the end. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, just inserted that little design element. And then at this point in time, if I feel good to publish, I'm going to go into finalize. And you can see that we have these little behavioral nudges. So for instance, if we wanted to say, we can make that change here. Um, we could say, Let's change this to Australia, Melbourne. And then based on permissions here, you might just see submit for approval if you don't have rights to publish directly. Um, I am an admin here, so I have rights to publish directly. I can also expand a number of different options. So you can see that you can set stories to publish in a future date with an embargo. Um, you can, for instance, add canonical URLs or block indexing. Um, so a lot of features that I think are very familiar to publishers here. Um, if I go ahead and hit publish now, you'll see that we are now live. Right, and one thing to just flag quickly is you might remember that we actually didn't delete our editor's note. So just an example of how that's working where I didn't have to think about it because I knew it was commented out. Um, if I decide I want to go and change uh, the story again, these little gear icons are visible because I'm logged in as a user right now. So I can actually go ahead and hop back in. I can change the permalink if I realize that there's a typo that I'm unhappy with for some reason. 
I can say, you know, I didn't actually love the full quote. It wasn't um, an additive element. We're going to make some minor edits here. Um, you can preview again in all of the same formats that you were previously able to do so. I can change the template up again if I want. So let's go and switch to a different template here. And then when I go into finalize here, um, you'll see that there's a couple notes here that are new based on my behavior. So for instance, changing the permalink post publish. Then I go ahead and hit publish changes and view story. And I should have actually shown you, um, I forgot to go back, so let me do this right now. Forgot to go back and show you how you can also revert back to previous versions here. So if I wanted to say, you know, let's actually go back to the city that knows how to eat, we're able to do that. Oops. So that uh, note that you just saw is triggered by, if you look in the up, upper right where it says saved, you'll see that as I'm typing, it will start to say um, working. So if I want to go back here and then hit save, that's just auto saving in the background to ensure that you don't lose your work. So changing back to previous version, hit save, I'm going to go ahead and hit finalize, publish changes, and now we have our published story here. Now I realize we are taking questions at the end, but are there any questions on this particular? Tyler, would you prefer me to take questions entirely at the end? Uh, I can. I can. Do some now that they're specific up to to uh, what you just showed. Yeah, um, anything that's related to creating a story might be helpful now, and then we can keep moving into how you curate and produce different types of content on the platform. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Um, okay, so I've got a few here. Um, so in the story editor, you have the story. You can insert pull quotes and actions and etc. Is there um, for different publications? Can you customize those? and have sort of special inserts that are specific to a publication? Um, you can, we are um, somewhat uh, restricted in terms of best practices. So for instance, we generally don't support um, a publisher being able to drop in ad hoc JavaScript can sometimes be uh, not a great outcome. But what we do allow for is um, we'll often work really closely with the publisher and especially um, very rarely, in fact, are there tools that are bespoke to one publisher that doesn't exist elsewhere. Um, that's not always the case, but a good example is um, we're working with a publisher right now that uses pim.js, which is uh, NPR's responsive iframe. And that is, that is a, something that I think a lot of newsrooms beyond just one newsroom might use. And so we'll add that as an insert field that then becomes available across the platform. Um, and we can enable or disable certain things. So if um, a publisher says, you know, we really never want to allow for a pull quote. It's just not part of our particular style guide for some reason. Um, we're able to disable that so it's not an option. Cool. Um, so in the version history and revision history, um, how long do you save revisions? Uh, do they clear out after a number of years for storage purposes or? So my, Pablo, I might toss this to you, but I'm pretty sure we store version history for as long as the story is um, in existence in the database. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, you can look at version control from 2004. All right. Awesome. Um, so um, is there a way that you can edit sort of, I know there's the raw HTML insert, but can you play with the raw HTML of the actual generated story or uh, are you limited to the WYSIWYG? Um, you are limited to the WYSIWYG. We don't have a scenario where you're ever going to be editing between tag, like HTML tags in the story. Um, Apple might be able to handle this better than I can, but we um, store all of our course uh, text in rich text format, which means that it doesn't get gummed up, which is why we're able to publish so seamlessly to Apple News or AMP or into other formats because you're not kind of working through muck in there. Um, That's right. Pablo, is there anything no, you, you, you'd add to that? No, you characterize it right. Um, yeah, the TLDR is that you, you cannot edit the raw HTML besides the HTML inserts that you mentioned. Um, and we do store um, 
the content in you know a structured data format um, so that we can transform it easily to other formats um, that Katrina mentioned. Et so we do, I mean, I guess one thing that we could call out, so we do support a SAS editor if you know how to use um, SAS styles, where if you, for whatever reason, really need the drop cap to be um, St. Patrick's Day green, as opposed to your normal styles, you'd have some control that is um, isolated just to that one story. You're always going to have, you know, some risk because part of how Chorus works is it's the source of all truth and you use it to publish to a number of different destinations and some third party platforms are relatively restrictive in seeing um, CSS or HTML kind of floating around, but that's also an option that is available to you. Cool. Um, so the, uh, the uh, editor's comments, um, are those uh, put into the final story as commented out HTML or are they not appear at all? Um, well, I guess we can check. It is um, available. So we have a course API. You can actually see noted out comments. So you might, for your own purposes, might want to um, remove editor's comments regardless, just as best practice. I would say the thing that is nice about it, though, is you don't have to worry about inadvertently publishing. Right. I, I think the concern was like, if, if somebody was looking at the source code for one of your published stories, would comments appear in there? We would have to look. Um, we could uh, look. Those are those are stripped out. Those don't don't appear in the in the public. Yeah, they're stripped out from the rendered story. Okay. Cool. Um, those are the questions I got for the story editing. If anybody has any more, feel free to submit them. Um, but other than that, I think we can move forward. Okay, I'm going to keep moving then. Um, so this this is kind of creating um, stories that are outside of the box, right? 95% of your use cases are this. One thing that I think is actually kind of fun to show, and I'm not going to do the demo of it because it's a little, um, it's a little bit more uh, requiring multiple people with including someone who's a better developer than I am, but we have a tool for new custom stories. And so what it is, is you really want to do bespoke storytelling where you're working with a reporter and a front end engineer or designer who can code and build projects, it allows you to tap into the chorus um, experience where you can create and upload assets, you can add captions, very similar to exactly how we did, and then you can reference those um, components or attributes in a, a bespoke experience. So a couple examples of that that I'll just call out really quickly is um, this particular project, if you um, see it's a parallax effect in the background, you can see that it's very image driven. If I um, navigate through the story, it has a very different navigation structure. So this is actually a story that was created in Chorus, um, as well as you know a combination of a developer using a command line interface to build a custom project. But it comes with the ad framework. It comes with the same ability to plug into analytics. It's not um, isolated or siloed out there where five years from now it's most likely a broken page. So one more example of that that I think is kind of fun is um, this one that was done by the Vox team using this tool. So you know Vox has a very kind of um, known look and feel but this is a, starting to blur it a little bit into something that is a little bit different from our normal storytelling formats where you can navigate the story a little bit differently. You can see that there are um, ways to look at the story in a slightly different way. And this, these products end up being um, really helpful to our newsrooms because 95% of the time you might want the out of the box element and then 5% of the time you really want to let um, your creativity go and you don't want to be restrained by that, but you still want to have um, best practices. So custom storytelling kit is one thing I would highlight. Another thing I would highlight is our video product. So I didn't actually show um, what it was like to add a video product, a video project that you might have created. So we embedded a YouTube video, but if I actually want to go into our chorus video product here, I'm in our test site here. Um, so you can see that it is um, 
similar to the core story editor feel, except that here you're actually going to be creating not text stories, but video stories. You can search in the same way that you previously could. So I could search for a sizzle. Um, I can create a new project. So if I want to add a new project, you go in here and say, Katrina's test project. And actually say, Um, you can select different, you know, and again, this is a test account, so there's a lot of random um, categories in here, but you would tailor them to be uh, right for you. I can go ahead and create it. You can add metadata. You can add multiple credit rules. I can go ahead and upload files. So if I want to go in here and upload, for instance, um, these two assets, I can go, go ahead and open. You can see that they're uploading. Um, I can uh, send it to get a caption file back. So we have an integration with a caption service. And then once I'm here, so we have our assets uploaded, I can actually go into files, I can see our assets. I can go ahead and say, close this. I can go ahead and say select this video file, use this thumbnail. Um, and so what's really nice about this is you can actually set different video files for different platforms. So if you want the long form video to be on YouTube um, with a cover image that has the headline because YouTube won't show the headline over the asset, you can do that. If I wanted to send a shorter cut to Facebook, I'm able to, if I had uploaded two versions of this video file, including a shorter one, I could select that. Um, you can send these to be available. So this now would actually be a video that was just published to YouTube. I could send it to Facebook. You can send it to OTT destinations. And then you can actually see where the story was used. So to give you one example of a video project that actually was already published, um, this is a Vox.com video. But you can see that they have this YouTube series called Open Sourced. There's multiple roles. Um, you can select revenue types or keywords. If I go into files, you'll see that they actually do have multiple files here, right? So there's different thumbnail images. If I go into platforms, you can see that they've actually created um, different, you can see this open source logo is different on this thumbnail as opposed to this one. And then you can actually see where it was placed. So I can see that it was embedded in a story. I can see what it looks like in YouTube you have a couple uh, different options available to you. Um, and so once the story is published, you can actually go back into your chorus um, story. And if you didn't want to embed the video from YouTube, you could also add your video. So if I wanted to say, you know, let's add a video and let me actually, I've been in an eater story, so let's stay in eater here. But if I wanted to add the red rock crab video here, I could do so. I still have the ability to add it, my own caption, insert video, and there it is. Um, now, if I were to look at this video in Chorus Video, it would say story placements, and this um, story, this would be that knows how to eat, would be among that list of placements. Any questions there before I keep plugging along? I uh, don't have any questions specifically for the video. Um, I don't know if you're gonna get to this later. I've gotten some questions just about of uh, course, is pricing model. Um, okay, well, we can tackle the um, logistics of what it looks like to migrate to Chorus at the end, I think. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so let me show you one last thing and then I think we'll leave lots of time for, for questions. So I um, wanted to show you quickly how easy it is to curate stories to the homepage. So if we wanted to um, actually move one of the stories that we published, I'm actually gonna go ahead and go into story layout here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop and you can see that there are a bunch of stories here that are pink and white. So pink is pinned. It won't go anywhere until it's been unpinned. White is going to be reverse chronological if it was tagged for the homepage. So any subsequent story that was tagged for the homepage um, will flow in reverse chronological order. So the most recent at the top. Um, I can drag and drop among here. So I can say like I actually want to unpin the story and maybe I want to um, remove this story 
I can go ahead and hit preview and say, you know, that looks great. There's our story. Um, let's go ahead and push change live. Now, if I go back to that story, we're able to see that our story that we've just published is live here. If I want to change the order, maybe I'll pull this up. And I actually want to change the layout of it. Let's change it to this alternative hero image. Like we actually really like that. So let's go ahead and push changes live. Um, and so I'm doing this for the homepage, but you can actually do this exact same process for any number of your kind of parent section friends. Um, so what's really nice about that is you have this hybrid approach of manual and automated curation where you can pin stories at the top that you really want to feature, but you can also keep pages looking fresh um, and stories that are targeted to local that are embargoed until 5 a.m. will naturally populate um, upon publish. Okay, I think at this point in time, I'm gonna take a quick breather from the screen share and um, make sure I can get to questions and I'll switch back to screen share if I wanna show you anything that comes up in your questions. Great, uh, let's see, uh, about the homepage demo you just gave, um, is there scheduling features? Um, so you can schedule something to go live at 7 a.m. or something? So we don't have the ability to schedule layouts per se, but you could um, set your story to publish at 7 a.m. and put it in the lead spot. And it would not be visible and then at 7 a.m. it would populate in. So it's not necessarily scheduling an exact layout, but it is scheduling stories to go live in the layout um, upon being published, whether embargoed or uh, manually pushed live. And um, on this, on the sort of story templating end of things, um, is there just sort of one story template, or um, would you be would you work with the publisher to create uh, the different templates they need, different short form templates or long form templates? So we tend to have um, a f we we can create. Um, we can create custom versions of templates. At the end of the day, they're actually all pretty similar in terms of theme. Like one is there's text over the image and that image is responsive and the text is responsive. And what we can customize is we can say, you know, do we want there to actually be um, a 10 pixel wide white border around it? Or do we want the font family to be um, Helvetica, not Georgia? Or do we want it to be really, really impact like um, really large typeface. We're able to work with the publisher and customize those templates, but there's not really like multiple variations of a template where the template itself is just text over the image. So one of the things that I think Chorus really tries to think pretty thoughtfully about is what is truly a template and then what is the design application that you apply to that template. Um, and that's really, I think, where you can hit the sweet spot of you know, really rich visual variation without necessarily having a repository of a thousand templates that are all minor variants of one another that you then have to support. Cool. Um, what is the process for injecting ads in articles or category pages? That's a great question. Um, we have a um, pretty uh, brilliant chorus ad framework. So there is logic that is based in that is configurable where you can inject at certain ad types and certain ad slots at different parts of the article. You can also have flex units. So you can have um, the ability to display at you know different ad sizes depending on the value of the ad in the same ad slot. Um, we also are able to set every individual ad slot into eager loading or lazy loading, which means lazy loading, it only loads when you hit it on the page, which advertisers really like because it keeps the ad valuable. Um, eager loading doesn't do that and can make the ad CPM go feel a little bit less valuable. But on the other hand, you're also maximizing 100% of your inventory all the time. So there might be reasons for a publisher to prefer eager loading or lazy loading, um, which you're able to set at the ad level. Um, we also have conversational intelligence, so it's scanning the article and it's really um, being pretty thoughtful about placing ads that are relevant and removing ads where it would be inappropriate. Uh, 
follow-up question here. Can you integrate with something like Google Ad Manager or a similar service like Yeah, so we um, work primarily with Google Ad Manager. Um, they're really, I think, the most common ad manager for publishers. Um, so that is really where you would load up Ad Creative and deliver it through the Chorus Ad Framework. Um, does Chorus do anything with mobile push notifications or web push, something like that? Um, we have breaking news banners and the ability to do some of that. Because we have a Chorus API, you can, um, if you are using Chorus in the headless banner, you could probably use those same fields to um, have like a web push. Um, at this point in time, we are mostly letting publishers build their own native apps. So Chorus doesn't have a native app among its suite of products. Um, so I think push notifications in a mobile sense for a native app would be on your own development. I've got a question from somebody who's at a TV station um, and curious about how Chorus could help with, with a TV provider. Do you have experience with that? Um, yes, we actually just launched um, this old house a couple weeks ago on Chorus and they have 40 seasons on PBS and lots of long episodes. Um, we also work with a number of publishers that do a lot of daily video, including um, Vox Media is owned and operated, does a lot of uh, video production. Um, so kind of as we showed, the Chorus video tool is incredibly robust. Um, the reason it's designed the way it is, is actually for high usage. So you might have lots of different clips and cuts for different platforms, but you want to see analytics at the project level. So you want to be able to see um, how something performed. You want to be able to tie a sponsorships package across the board, whether it goes to Facebook or YouTube or your owned and operated website. Um, so I, I think Chorus Video and the Chorus Story Editor are remarkably well suited for um, television news. Um, are there, I think, I know the answer is, but are there options for cross posting between multiple sites? Um, let me make sure I understand the question. Is the question, can you, if one site publishes a story, can you show the story on a related site? Is that the question? Yeah, whoever asked me that question, if you can uh, answer, yeah, correct. Okay, so let me show you actually a couple neat things here. So let's go ahead and go into the story that we were in. Um, let me pick up my screen share. This is really not interesting if you're actually just looking at my face. There we go. Um, so I'm back in the story that we were just editing. So if I go in here and hit edit feature, so one really nice thing is if I want to go ahead and go to my finalized tab, if you are a property that has multiple sites, which is what Chorus is really well suited to support, um, you can actually um, copy stories or move them to related communities. So for instance, um, if you had, uh, if I were logged into Eater, you could do um, Eater and then move this story as well to Eater New York and actually make a copy of the story there. Um, the other alternative, so it is pretty easy to like create duplicates of the story. That's also part of the use of if you wanted to use the canonical URL. Um, but the other thing that's actually kind of nice is if you want to add in a story from a related site. So the course white label is part of the Vox Media Network so I can kind of mimic what it is like here, I can actually just say, you know, let me go ahead and find the story. So I just dropped in the URL. I'm going to drag it in here, hit preview, and you can actually see that it's now live here. It says from eater.com. I go ahead and push changes live, and then I go back to our site. Um, you can see that it's now live here, and if I click through it, I'm actually going to the original eater.com story. I'm not going to a copy of it. So what's nice about this is it's really easy to curate um, a related or partner property site, but still drive traffic to the original source. So you can do either format. Awesome. Uh, I got some feedback from the question after. It says best feature ever. So uh, that's great. Yeah. It is great. Um, Chorus was designed, I think a little bit of historical context is helpful. Chorus was designed to scale up um, SB Nation, which back in 2006 was very few sites, 
but over the next 10 years became a ton of sports sites related to professional and collegiate teams. Um, and so a lot of the functionality of Chorus is really actually um, around the process of how do you have multiple sites in an organization and have some collaborative editing effort. And so that's really just been in the DNA for the last 10 years. Cool. Um, I got a couple more here. Um, can you talk through um, tagging and how robust and granular you can get with your tagging taxonomy? Um, and if there's a uh, parent child relationships between tags. Yeah. So um, our tagging structure, we use the term groups and you can nest groups within groups. So for instance, if I actually were to look at this example here, um, education is a group and it is nested under local state. Um, similarly, transportation is a group that is nested under the group local state. So we don't necessarily distinguish like WordPress does between categories and tags, but you can create that same parent-child hierarchical structure. Cool. Um, can you integrate uh, any given analytics platform like Parsley or Amplitude um, and would the course team help set up those connections or is the publisher's technical team responsible for that? Um, for the most part, we have primarily set them up um, and we have support for Parsley, Chirpy, Google Analytics, a bunch of different um, analytics providers. Um, you can also set it up through on your own through Google Tag Manager if you wanted to. Okay, um, I think that's all the questions I have aside from, I think people do wanna hear a bit just more about the logistics of, of working with you all. Sure, so um, our process is uh, we have a um, one-time setup fee and that one-time setup fee encompasses what is often at minimum three months of work and sometimes longer um, and is really scoped to the size of the project. So um, some, you know, we migrate over the full archives of an existing site. We set up third-party integrations. Um, one of the primary factors in the timing of that initial setup is also on design. So um, it so happens that most people tend to, while they're thinking through kind of like existentially changing out their CMS, they also think about changing their design at the same time. Um, and so design can take a lot of time or a very little amount of time, but that is a variable in that mix. Um, and then the other is, uh, I think people have different pressures around um, timeline. And so we try to move really fast, but it is definitely not something that necessarily happens instantaneously overnight. Um, once, and actually, um, big shout out to Ben and Nicole who are on this call as well. Um, we do a pretty um, robust and extensive training. So in addition to actually getting technically onboarded, you're culturally onboarded to Chorus, um, where you learn the lingo, you know how to navigate all your docs, you know um, how to reach support, you know how to um, read up on new features and where to see the release notes. And so there's a lot of um, process that we have in place around that as well. Um, once you are launched, you start paying a fixed monthly platform fee, and that is um, sized to a couple different things. So um, some of our publishers don't need the full suite of products, so number of products can be a factor there. Um, a site that has 500 users versus 80 users is a slightly different user base. So um, there are some variables around size of users and size of the site that happen as well as number of sites. So we um, have had a number of publishers talk to us about having multiple sites that were migrating and setting up either a shared or um, very distinct design systems for each one of those. Um, the process is shorter for a headless usually where um, in a headless environment, the publisher would retain its own front end website, you're building your own website, you're in control of the look and feel, any design project would be fully on your own and the core side is really migrating over the content and getting everyone familiar in the tools. Um, so that process is one that I think is a little bit um, faster. Great, um, I don't have any more questions here. Um, is there more you wanted to show? Um, let me show you one really cool thing. And I'm gonna drop my screen share while I make sure I'm logged into this, but I do think it's really fun. Um, let's see, give me one quick second here.
Okay, so let me go ahead and share screen. So we um, not only think about products and um, ease of use, but we also think about some of the tools that are built into the process of understanding your audience and understanding what's working. So one of those tools, let's um, share my screen again here, is a tool that is an internal tool of ours called Chorus Optimize, where you can actually run different experiments on your homepage um, and see what is outperforming. So you might see these little bubbles here where it says four, four, one, one. These are experiments getting run. So if I wanted to actually pick on this one, you can actually see that there are four headlines that have different click-through rates. And so for instance, in this particular one, you see a really different click-through rate um, between the headline that is outperforming versus the two earlier options. And this is, um, dynamically occurring. So it'll start waiting towards the winners of the headline. You can also customize thumbnail or um, deck head and give you a lot of um, insights. So we have editorial insight dashboards that also tell editorial teams what is working and what's not and how the experiment is doing. And this is really fun because um, it gives editorial teams very quick real time feedback without requiring monitoring because it's actually waiting on its own um, towards what's outperforming. So one, one cool sneak peek at a tool that we have uh, running in the background here. Okay, yeah. any last burning questions? Yeah, I've got one more that came in. Um, so someone, uh, say we want to build out a big custom package with a unique landing page template that doesn't match any of the other archive templates. Uh, will we work with Chorus to develop that custom package for us? And is that an added cost on a per project basis? So if you were to, if it was a one-off template um, that you wanted to have for a custom story, I would point you to the custom storytelling kit. And that's really part of the Chorus product suite. So that's on your own. You build it. Um, you can uh, build that 100% independently of us, and including tying in advertising analytics, the works. Um, if you wanted a template format that was reusable, um, so we often have people come to us and say like, we do these list templates or we do these how-to templates or we do this type of template. Um, more often than not, we're able to actually um, modify or even use the tools as is to support exactly that template layout. And so it depends on the scope of the template project and it could be added cost. But for the most part, um, we're able to, I think, support more options than people realize um, either with no or with little added cost um, or added time even for that matter. Um, what is, you know, I think we would also love, like we all, we all, we love talking to publishers because um, we generally tend to hear the same requests from different publishers. And so, it is actually just for our own product thinking, an extraordinarily robust feedback mechanism for us to be working with our publishers and talking to publishers and market about what they need. Because um, if we continue to hear the request for a certain type of template that we don't support, it becomes pretty easy for us to start to say, you know, is this something that we should prioritize and fast track um, and make it part of the platform. Uh, follow up to that, which I think I did see, but maybe you didn't explicitly demo. Um, you can clone and duplicate stories, correct? correct. So, like, they do sort of a, a custom thing in the story, you could build on top of that clone from there. And keep yeah, it. so let me actually show you, pick up my screen share really quickly again here. Um, so, in addition to where we were in the publish uh, screen where you could copy a story, you can actually see a couple options here. So I could go ahead and straight up just copy the story. And you'll see that this is quite literally a copy of the exact same story. Um, but the copy function that you saw when I was in the finalize also allows you to copy it to like, for instance, even a copy it as like a, uh, something that you can copy and paste or something that you can move to a different related site. Great. Um, I think that's all the questions I have and we're running out of time here. Um, so thank you, Katrina. This was fantastic. Um,
everybody got a lot out of this. Um, just a reminder uh, from my end, um, we're gonna let this video process and once I do, I will send that out. Um, I will also be sending contact information for Katrina and uh, also the other demos we had last week. Um, so you can follow up with any, any providers that you're interested in. And I will also be sending a short survey, it'll be very short and I'd really appreciate it if you could take five minutes to, to do that and let us know how we did on these and what you'd like to see in the future. Um, I think that's all from me. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.